we're hard on ourselves where we sort of demand something you know we're like I guess with motherhood or family planning you're like I should be able to do this I should be feeling these things and it's it's actually okay if you're not you know what's up YouTube fam this is your girl Laura Denise host of this two shall suck podcast a fresh perspective on grief back with another episode so as you can see we're going to be talking about the grief of having a miscarriage so I know this can be triggering for some people so I did want to put that out there up front um, of course we don't go into detail or anything like that but I do know how sensitive this topic can be I have an amazing guest on her name is Tahina she is a director writer producer of a film called the misunderstanding of miscarriages or mums for short absolutely amazing journey absolutely amazing story about her so she had several miscarriages and now uh, how she is really kind of leading the charge of having that conversation about having miscarriages and misunderstandings that are associated with it and so we talk about why it is important and that you can grieve having a miscarriage we talk about if you have a partner how to be able to have that conversation with them if you know somebody who's had a miscarriage what to say to them and then also how to honor that baby who you lost and so we just talk about so many amazing amazing things as always leave a comment at the end let me know what resonated with you the most if you know someone who has had a miscarriage please share this with them because I know it's going to resonate with them and help them and as always I can't wait to see you guys and meet you on the comments I hope you all enjoyed the episode welcome back welcome back welcome back <laughs> welcome back my loves to another week's episode if this is your first time here welcome 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 thank you so much for being here if you are a loyal love as i call you thank you for being here thank you for coming back so on today's episode um obviously if you could tell by the title we're going to be diving into the grief of having a miscarriage and so a lot of you guys have sent me messages emails about diving into this episode, but I was, you know, wanted to be really, really, um, you know, careful about this because I know it can be triggering. Um, <clears throat> I know how upsetting it can be. You know, I don't have children. I do desire to have children. And so um, again, I can just the pain and the thought of it um, really just hurts my heart. And so I, I wanted to be really careful about it. And uh uh, actually found a, a beautiful human being who is going to be on um, and uh, she's going to share her story on um, having multiple miscarriages and how she is able to kind of push through and move forward in that, right? And so um, I'm really, really excited. You know, as I told her, she kind of fell into my Instagram lap, right? Um, I saw her on another podcast and I listened to it and I was like, oh my God, I have to have her on. And I just slid in the DMs and uh, she said yes. So um, she's doing some amazing things to kind of bring more light to the situation and to make the conversation louder and to talk about it more. And so uh, I'm just really, really excited for you guys to hear the uh, conversation. And so you already know, like to come with a little, a little bit of knowledge beforehand. You know, obviously I don't have my own personal experience with having a miscarriage. I do have friends, unfortunately, who have had miscarriages um, and, you know, now have had their rainbow babies and, you know, are uh, living lives, you know, kind of full lives. But, you know, I feel like that you always still have, you know, that little piece, you know, missing of you. And, um, she talks about that a little bit. Um, she 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 definitely discusses that a little bit. I'm just gonna call her T for now, so y'all can hear, her, you know, her full name. But um, you know, she talks about that a little bit, kind of grieving that life or of that dream that you would have had, right? And so um, <clears throat> I'm just really really grateful that she was able to come on and we're able to talk about that. And so um, you know, if you have had a miscarriage, um, if you um, have one in the future. And, you know, I really, really hope that this episode just resonates and it helps and gives you just a little, little piece of joy. And so, um, you know, I looked up some, some research and, uh, um, something that I found was, uh, one in four women have a miscarriage and that there's different levels of having a miscarriage. You know, they call it the early term miscarriage. And then like they have the, I don't want to say midterm and late term, but you know, they have it when it's later. So after, um, this article says after 20 weeks is when it's, um, deemed as late. Um, so that's what technically they call a 
Sorry, y'all. My cord is falling here. Um, that's what they call a, a late term miscarriage. But um, something that we also bring up is it doesn't matter when it happens, right? It doesn't matter if it is two weeks after you find out. It doesn't matter if it's 20 weeks after you find out. It doesn't matter if it's a stillbirth. A miscarriage is a miscarriage, and we need to have more conversation about it. And uh, we talk about it a little bit. Uh, and I talked about it in my episode about disenfranchised grief. I'm going to link it in the show description. And I talk about just what disenfranchised grief is and why kind of miscarriage falls into that. Because as a society, it's not deemed uh, appropriate to grieve a miscarriage or that you don't need to grieve it that long, right? Because a lot of people are like, oh, okay, well, you had a miscarriage. Like, try it again, right? Just just say silly, silly, silly things, you know? Um, so go back to my episode and I'll link that too of what not to say to somebody when they're grieving. And that's one of the things you definitely should not say to someone who just had a miscarriage. Like, yeah, get back at it. At least you would have another baby. It's like, y'all, oh, don't do that. Please don't do that. That is tacky and just not cute. <laughs> it's just not cute. And so, um, you know, uh, like I said, this website was talking about one in four. And that's a lot, y'all. That's a lot of women. Um, whether, again, whether it's two weeks, 20 weeks, you know, right up until like it's it's just, again, I can only imagine the pain that you go through, the guilt, the hurt, the confusion, all of the just emotions that you have to go through and then you know, your partner, like, are they thinking it's their fault? You know, just, just so many different emotions um, that we talk about, that we dive into. Um, and so I, I really am excited for you guys to hear the interview. I know it's going to resonate with a lot of you guys who have gone through that uh, trauma, who are, you know, currently dealing with that grief right now. And I'm just really, really praying and hoping that this gives you just a little, a little teach. I always say just a little teach of hope um, in your grieving journey. Um, and so we're going to get into it right after this break, because y'all already know these bills ain't going to get paid by themselves. All right, we are back, you guys. And as I told you all, I'm super, super, super excited to have this guest on. Uh, I was literally just telling her she fell into my Instagram lap. And I'm just so grateful that she, you know, I slid to the DM and uh, she said yes. And so I'm just going to read her bio real quick and then we'll get right into it. Tahina began her career as an actress in New York and starred in several films and television shows, including X-Men, CSI, and Charlie's Angels, before transitioning into the world of directing, writing, and producing. Her first short film debuted on the International Film Festival circuit in 2015 and won Best International Short Film at the Hollywood Reel Independent Film Festival. She found Neon Jane Productions with the with producer and co-founder Kelly Tomasich after both women felt the same passion to showcase unique storytelling. And in the 2020, the duo launched the Australian Women's Film Festival, a short film festival celebrating women in film and honoring those who have made a significant contribution to the industry. That same year, Tahina released her feature documentary, Mum, Misunderstandings of Miscarriage on premium streaming service, Stan. The film follows Tahina's personal journey through pregnancy loss while interviewing doctors, psychologists, and a patchwork of women sharing their experiences. The film received audience and critical acclaim. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome the beautiful Miss Tahina! That's my... <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much. <laughs> what an intro! Thank you. <laughs> right. I was like, "That's my, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't have my, you know, my horns yet. I should, I should probably get some. Then I would stop doing it myself." But <laughs> here we are. Whatever works, no, thank, whatever works. What? Whatever works, right? <laughs> but no, thank you so much again for being here. Um. You know, like I was sharing with you, so many people have just reached out to me, say, hey, can you do an episode on miscarriage? And I, I wanted to be really careful with it because I know um, how triggering it can be. I know how tough it can be, um, even in the the world of grief, where it's such a disenfranchised grief and how people act like, you know, you shouldn't grieve a miscarriage, which is weird to me, which we'll get into. Um, so I'm just so grateful that you are out here like you know, fighting the good fight and really, you know, leading that charge and saying like, this is what we need to talk about. This is what's misunderstood about it. So again, just thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, no, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So I always like to ask, um, you know, obviously, you know, you've had multiple miscarriages and so, um, 
Can you talk about that, kind of walk through that journey of, I guess, your miscarriage journey for those who do not know the beautiful Miss Tahina? Yes. Well, um, <clears throat> so when I met my husband and we started talking about family, I guess I always assumed everything would happen really easily. And at that point, when we really started thinking about starting a family, I was 28 years old and I had heard of miscarriage, but it wasn't really in my vortex of what I thought could go wrong. Um, and I fell pregnant straight away. And, you know, all those feelings when I saw that positive test, you know, we rang our family straight away. It was like an immediate connection. Um, we started talking about what schools, where we wanted to live, you know, what our future family looked like. And about, um, I want to say about seven weeks, between six and seven weeks later, um, I woke up one morning and I had very strong pregnancy symptoms to begin with. And I woke up in the morning and there was just blood. And I guess, you know, my, my immediate panic, I, I just knew something was wrong. And I went to, right. I was live, actually living in um, Los Angeles at the time and I went to an emergency room and we had lost that baby. And I was completely uh, shocked. Um, I obviously just completely devastated because everything I had had in, uh, sort of envisioned was ripped away. And then on top of that, the sonographer at the um at the hospital was just really cold towards me um, because I had all these mm. questions because I didn't know what I was experiencing. And she told me, you know, just go home and take the handle. Yeah. And I found that just so cold and heartless. So I ended up having to Google everything and research. And I just, again, I, there wasn't a, a conversation about miscarriage. So I had to sort of go down Dr. Google and find all these like quiet hidden forums about it, which I found really strange. And then, you know, I had, I fell pregnant again with my daughter Echo and there was, you know, there was anxiety around that pregnancy, but thankfully everything worked out okay. And then when we started talking about having um, another child, I miscarried another two times. And it was on mm. my second miscarriage that I started documenting what I was going through because all of a sudden, and you know, I was already sort of in that filmmaking world and I just started recording these videos on my phone and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do yet, but I, I felt like there had to, I felt a real strong need to have a conversation and share these videos somehow um, yeah. because I, again, it was just silenced. It was really silenced and you know, I was really confused and I was lost. And, and, um, and then, yeah, I ended up making the film and, and um, in a weird way, you know, the last five years since the, the release of the film and the whole process of making the film, there's been such a growing conversation. So it, that's been really cool to see because I feel like, I, I, I mean, I guess I wish I had those resources when I experienced my first loss. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think what hurts me the most about it is like you said, you know, you go, you have this miscarriage and the sonographer is like, oh, well, you know, I'm sorry, go home and take some medicine. It's like, I literally just lost a child, you know? So I want to talk about that a little bit. I feel, you know, we talk about disenfranchised grief, right? Like I have a whole episode about uh, disenfranchised grief and and why it's not you know, why society doesn't deem a miscarriage as like appropriate to grieve. Uh, why do you think that is like, and, and, and I feel like I have a inkling of why I feel like people don't associate a miscarriage as like a real baby. Like you have to be at a certain point before it's a real baby. So where do you think that came from? If that's even what it is. You are absolutely right. That is where it is coming from. And it's this weird hierarchy of grief. Well, you know, anything, and it's that strange 12 week rule, right? Where doctors say, you know, don't sort of say anything to anyone until you hit that 12 week mark, because then it becomes officially real, which is really strange because, uh, you know, I've been pregnant a few times now and you are connected from the very first moment up until, you know, baby is born. And it's just this hierarchy of grief where, 
um, if someone loses their baby at 20 weeks. And yes, it is very traumatic and I'm absolutely not taking away from that experience. But it could be as equally traumatic when you're losing it at two weeks, especially if you're so invested in family planning and your baby. Um, And I think that is essentially what it is, is that people or society or, or maybe the medical, you know, the medical community don't really see it as a baby yet. And that's really hard to take because, and, and that was what I found interesting on my journey, sort of learning about it is, and I completely, I respect the medical community. I get it. You know, they're like, it's a group of cells. It's an embryo. It's this, it's that. But, you know, for a lot of women, as soon as they see that heartbeat, that's that's their baby for them. And it's very hard to kind of um, disassociate from what you imagine in your head. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Um, that's interesting. Let that 12 week rule in the hierarchy, because I know you talked about that um, in your documentary about that 12 week rule and that hierarchy. So can you um, kind of dive into that? So obviously the 12 weeks, you know, doctors say that's when it's safe, which is silly to tell people. Um, let's talk about that a little more. Why is it, um, do you think that, and and I think somebody, uh, Katie, I believe talked about it in your documentary, you know, creating that hierarchy. So when you speak about the hierarchy, what exactly are you speaking about for those people who have not seen your film? Cause you know, I know, and I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. And it makes sense, you know, but for those people who haven't seen it, you know, can you dive a little bit Mm -hmm. into that? Absolutely. So again, I, it's this idea that after, you know, after 12 weeks, it's, it's deemed safe. Um, and I guess anything, um, you have early term miscarriage, which is in that, you know, one to 12 week window. Then you have a late term miscarriage, which is 12 to 20 weeks and 20 weeks and beyond is deemed a a stillbirth. And I guess Mm. that's where it's sort of broken down very medically about this is what happens. And I I feel as though there is this general consensus out there and certainly, you know, with, you know, work policies and things like that when people can actually take time off work is if someone experiences a stillbirth, you know, that is a hugely traumatic event and that is, you know, very much like go home, rest, look after yourself and whereas miss early term miscarriage especially hasn't got that same kind of um what is it like duty of care level of care um and understanding and I think the problem with that is totally and it's it's separating this kind of idea that and that well your grief is more um valid than my grief but I can tell you from my experience when I lost a baby at six weeks at 12 weeks and then at like two weeks, each of those, that grief was still very, very real for me. And I needed to feel that and I needed to feel validated. And I suppose that, you know, that sort of um, hierarchy is kind of weirdly blocking us from abling to process that grief because you mm. question what you're experiencing. So that's why you're so confused because you're like, but I feel so broken by this why can't I cry? Like, what are you saying? Like, so just take a Panadol and, and, you know, the other, the other sort of things that I sort of talk about in the film is like a lot of the, the language about it. Like, you know, people would say, well, at least it was only three weeks or at least, you know, you can get pregnant or, you know, just jump back on the horse and try again. And it sort of takes away from everything that you're feeling. I cannot. Like, I can't, like, I literally had a full episode. I'm like, why would you say that to someone who had a miscarriage of like, oh, well, at least you can try again, or at least you can try for another baby. And I'm like, yeah, but that was their baby. They wanted that baby. Like, (laughs) exactly. So that's where the, that's where there's a lot of like cross communication and a lack of understanding and education where I feel like, You know, like I said, I do think the conversation is growing, but, you know, people who haven't experienced loss or family members need to kind of understand that experience from any other loss. If, you know, if someone's grandmother passed, you would say, look, I'm so sorry for your loss. Take the time, take whatever you need. And 
I think, and again, this is not every, I, I don't want to sort of blanket it and saying this is everyone's experience. Some people are very pragmatic and go, oh, that was my body and that's just what's happened and move on. Whereas others get really invested in that grief and, and are really struggling to kind of process what's going on. Yeah, no, for sure. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so I want to talk about that a little bit for, um, cause I know you said, you know, now you, I know you have, um, some more kids. And so uh, I want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I think the proper term is, or the term is rainbow baby. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I can imagine, and you know, you kind of dive on this a little bit as well. I can imagine, you know, you've had these miscarriages, um, and then you get pregnant again and then it's successful. Um, you know, how hard is it to connect with this child, um, you know, or this pregnancy for that matter, when you've had a miscarriage, like trying to connect after that, I can imagine is hard. For my experience, it was, it was very tricky. I, I had, um, with my, my rainbow baby after my first loss, um, I felt really deeply connected to, um, but I, there was a huge element of fear. I would say the first 20 weeks, there was a huge element of fear that it was going to be taken away, but I want, I, I wanted her so badly, you know? So I was just, I was just obsessed with my pregnancy. Um, when I fell pregnant with my son after two losses, um, that was really hard for me. I really, really struggled to connect with that pregnancy. And that pregnancy had complications. I had diabetes. I, you know, we had a, 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 a scan where, you know, the ventricles in his brain were slightly enlarged. And um, it just kind of, it was just like one anxiety ridden thing after another. And I found it so hard to connect with him, which then added on this weird guilt because then I was like, oh my gosh, what kind of mama? Like, it was just so many layers of guilt. Um, right, right. It was, yeah. And so I like, you know, and then he came along and still, you know, the first year of Oshin's life, I struggled a little bit. Like, I was like, this, this feels different. And I mean, you know, that's also women. We kind of, you know, we're, we're hard on ourselves. You know, you would probably know, like we're hard on ourselves where we sort of demand something, you know, we're like, I guess with motherhood or family planning, you're like, I should be able to do this. I should be feeling these things. And it's, it's actually okay if you're not, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> and then weirdly, right. enough, I fell pregnant with my third son. Um, totally. Like I was editing the film. I, I like, I always thought maybe a third child, but it wasn't really like, I wasn't like planning for him as I was with the other two. And I don't know whether it was because I'd been through this whole journey, but my pregnancy with him was was smooth and I felt really calm. And I didn't, I was just like, and maybe that was my whole process in that talking out loud about what I was feeling and going through because I felt really like relaxed in my, my, my pregnancy with my, you know, with my third child. So I guess every experience is different, but certainly the trauma from the, the multiple miscarriages affected that, that pregnancy with Oshin for sure. Oh, I believe it. No, I believe it wholeheartedly. And I, and I, and I believe you touched on this as well. One in three, I believe it's one in three women who have a miscarriage have post-traumatic, uh, I'm sorry, that's post-traumatic Lord, postpartum, um, which makes sense, right? You know, cause you, yeah. you and, it, and it's funny because people probably are like, well, you can only have postpartum if you have a baby. And it's like, um, no, it's the whole experience. And, and again, it's so hard to explain it to people who haven't actually experienced loss. It's really tricky. So I get why people are a little bit, you know, well, certainly someone who hasn't experienced loss or kind of looks at it from a very pragmatic point of view, um, go, I, I don't get what you're like, what's your problem? Like, you know, and I guess, it's um it's really traumatic and then obviously you know i still managed to fall pregnant um naturally then some women have to go down that ivf route some women have to go down mm. surrogacy adopt like all these other things to have their dreams of family and you know that that that's hard that's tricky on people so i i just 
can't remember. I've gone waffling about <laughs> something. But I but yeah, it's um yeah, I I I still think there just needs to be a louder conversation. Yeah, I agree. No, I definitely agree. So for those people who may have had a miscarriage and um and you talked about this a little bit too. So it kind of, I guess it goes back to that 12 week rule. So I, what I notice is a lot of people who I talk to about miscarriages, they they feel alone or they feel like they can't talk to anyone or, you know, when, they just don't know, you know, and people who are around them don't know. Right. And so like, how do you uh, create kind of that bridge um, to be able to say, Hey, this is what I'm going through. Because I, what I recognize a lot of times is that when people have miscarriages and they talk to somebody, they're like, oh, well, I had one too. And so it's like this kind of like hush, hush, like grief culture of like, okay, well, I don't want to mm-hmm. tell anyone I had a miscarriage. And I know obviously it goes back to that disenfranchised grief. But do you think that a lot of that comes from that 12 week rule of like not telling your family and friends so that just in case something happens, you know, but at the same time, I feel like you should tell them because if something happens, right? So what are your thoughts Absolutely. on that? Do you, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It's just like, you know, if you say you don't tell anyone and you go through a miscarriage and it is an isolating experience because you're the one feeling it. It's very hard to kind of dictate what you're, what you're going through, you know, cause it, you cramp, it's it's like you're you getting mini contractions and it can be quite um, painful and horrible and then you have the emotional impact as well. If you have to go through that alone, um, I I just I think that would be I I mean I told my family from the get-go, like I was I was pregnant and I still felt isolated in my grief. So that mm. just goes to show you uh, that how strange that um, that emotion and, and again I think it is that goes back to that 12 week rule of like, is this a real baby? Am I allowed to grieve this much? You know, what, you know, what will people listen to me? Am I, you know, is it, is it whingy of me? I don't understand. Like, so you're dealing with all these questions and feelings and I just, you know, I'm a really big advocate and, and I I say this every time and I don't mean like, you don't need to go on Instagram and do the whole big baby announcement. I mean, just like tell your bestie, tell, tell your mom, tell your dad, like, you know, I'm pregnant, should anything go wrong, you want to have that support that, you know, that they're there for you in case emotionally you're not coping well. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. And so for those who are the support system, right, um, what are some ways in which they can support someone going through that if they've never experienced that before? Sure. I mean, like we've been discussing as well, it's definitely a language thing. Be really careful of the words you use um, and genuinely come at it from a perspective if if it was to anyone um, who was to experience a loss from a family member or a friend or something like that. Really think about it in those terms because, um, you know, it's, simply by just sort of saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for your loss and I'm, I'm here if you need that's sometimes all women need to hear. Um, and again, I anything that dismisses the loss or makes it smaller, I think is um, detrimental to kind of the woman, uh, well, the family's process of going through that grief. So again, like anything, well, at least you can get pregnant or at least this or at least that, or, you know, like just jump back on the horse, try again, like all those type of things. I think that kind of um, it, it minimizes the loss and then it, it really doesn't allow the person to sort of heal through the grief that comes up because, you know, for, for a lot of, and like we were saying about post-traumatic stress disorder and stuff like that, the grief is really real and it's actually really hard to understand. Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Like, please, please don't, please don't tell somebody to get back on the horse. <laughs> like. If you are listening and you have said that before, like we forgive you, but please don't ever say that again. <laughs> like seriously. Well, but also it's like the last thing on your mind. Like, you know, you're like, I'm like, I'm not even thinking like that right now, you know? So it's just, it's, I get people are just trying to help, but you know, I think that's it. I think it's just like education and information and, you know, like that's the only way we can grow as a society to kind of, you know, help with these type of things. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because like, <laughs> I'm, I promise I'm not thinking about, you know, jumping back on a horse right after. Okay. So, <laughs> so let, let's talk about, um, I know your husband was, uh, you know, uh, having his own grief um, within that. And I think we don't talk about that enough as well as, you know, obviously it happens to the woman, but like, how does that affect your partner? And, you know, how they go through their own little grieving journey. And, you know, a lot of times you're like, you're so kind of consumed in your own, you know, feeling like maybe I did something wrong or it's my fault because I'm the woman and this is what I'm naturally born and supposed to do. Right. Um, And so, you know, can you talk a little bit about that? You know, um, just your husband and his grieving journey and how it affected you guys' relationship. Yeah. Uh, my husband really struggled um, as well with the the amount of pain he felt. I think he, and again, I only discovered this when I was shooting the film, when I actually forced him to sit down and talk about it. You know, he's pretty old school and like he doesn't really talk about his feelings. And um, I, I, I suppose for him, like you said, I was going through all my grief and things like that, blaming myself. And I didn't realize that he was, doing the same thing, thinking that something was wrong with him. And when I sat down and spoke to him about it, he said he felt it it was really hard for him because he wasn't experiencing it. So he couldn't really put, um, put it into words, how to help himself or help me because he felt devastated, upset, but he also wanted to be a rock for me. Um, so I, and, and that's what I, it, it sort of was a common theme throughout the, the film. Like the, the partners that I spoke to were really at a loss of how to best support their partner as well as deal with their own grief. And I think ultimately the kind of general thing that helped everyone was the fact that they had to talk about it and really get in deep with each other and, and go to the, like, you know, really admit to sort of feeling like, you know, I feel like this is my fault. That's a really hard thing to say to your partner. Like, and I really struggled like saying to Tristan, like, I feel like I'm I'm broken. And I remember Tristan being like, no, I feel like I'm broken. So it was kind of good. Then we both had like an ugly cry and you sort of move forward. So I really, again, it's, it's a communication thing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I believe that. Cause um, you know, I had some friends who really struggled and uh, went through the IVF journey, like you were talking about, and they both kind of were on their own path and didn't want to say anything to each other because they were afraid of, you know, maybe hurting the other person's feelings or, you know, it's just a weird dynamic, right? Um, And so I'm glad that you guys, you know, you were kind of making that documentary. Do you think that helped open up, you know, you guys to be able to have that conversation? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't know Tristan was feeling these things, you know. I just assumed he, you know, like we had those conversations, but I I wasn't sure whether he was as connected as me or, and then I found out he was. So, you know, it's, and then also on the flip side of that, I, I remember speaking to a partner who wasn't connected at all, but his wife was so connected. So he didn't know how to support her in the best way. And then he uh, he said to me sort of off camera he was just like you know she was getting sort of cranky that I didn't feel as connected but it wasn't the case at all I just wanted to be a little bit more pragmatic about it so it's really interesting and like you said for, for your friends who are going through that experience often it is kind of two different mindsets kind of you know because again it's not like you dream about going through IVF or problems with you know family right. planning it's just like yeah, it's sort of thrown at you and you kind of have to deal with it in the best way you know how. And it is really, really tricky. It's really tricky. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I listen, when she was just telling me about her journey and her husband, and I'm like, God bless y'all. Like, because, you know, just all the appointments and all the the blood work and all the shots and, you know, the hoping that this time it's going to work, like, you know, I just, you know, I told her, I'm like, I hate that for you because, you know, as you said, it, it's so funny about like, you know, just the idea of having a miscarriage, especially like when we're young, we're like, oh no, like that's like a, 
And I think this is something that you said too. Like this only happens to older people. This doesn't happen to like, I'm in my twenties. No, <laughs> no, no, uh, totally. Yeah. Thing. And and again, exactly. Cause you just don't see it. It was just like a lack of information out there. And then as soon as I experienced one, and then like you said, all of a sudden, like my girlfriends came out and said, Oh, I've actually lost a baby. And then you find out like one in four pregnancies, um, end in miscarriage and it's just like what you know like that's what I I was like hit with a hammer when I heard that because I just thought oh my gosh this is so and 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 again I Katie said this as well just because some something is common doesn't mean it's okay you know like it's it's a very common um, experience but it's you know it, it it can be a very traumatic experience yeah, no, that's, that's good. Cause that's real. Cause in, in that, I mean, that's grief though, right? Like, you know, people are like, okay, you know, you, you grieve now, get over it. And it's like, <laughs> that's not how that works at yeah. all. Yeah. It's and like you were saying as well, when we were chatting. Yeah. But like the layers of grief, right? So not only grieving your baby, but you're grieving like the dreams you've had, you're grieving like the relationship you and your partner had before, before all this shit like it's just you know like it's just it's really hard to like yeah the layers of grief are really complex as well I didn't you know what like when you said that I didn't even think about that like grieving the this like you said this dream life that you had for not only like you but like your child like oh my god like I like that like the moment you just said that I'm like oh my god I didn't even think about that layer of grief I don't know why that just like, but it's true. It, yeah. No, no, but that's it. Like I'm sure like for couples as well, experience IVF or all of a sudden, if they find out they can't have children on their own, like then you have that whole process of grieving that part of, you know, that family planning dream is sort of ripped away and you have to start a whole other process. So yeah, it's, it's life sometimes, you know, life it's, it's it throws you a whole bunch of stuff. I'm telling you, I'm like, oh my gosh, like that. Just, I'm like, pew, like, what? Why that? I'm just like, <laughs> like, yeah. But that, that's that's grief. It goes like twenty layers mm -hmm. deep off of one thing, you know. Um, so yeah. you know, you have this amazing documentary that you did, you know, to talk about it. And like you said, you you just started kind of recording videos, and it just turned into a thing. You know, I can imagine, you know, obviously you have, now we know the 27 layers that it goes. How were you able to kind of push through that um, and, you know, be able to uh, create this documentary about uh, miscarriages, you know, and then it, it's one of those things, right? Like, I feel like, you know, being engulfed in the world, like, you know, being in the, in the grief work that I am, like, people are like, how do you function? when you stay in like a place of grief. And so I wonder, you know, when you were creating the documentary, how you were able to push through and talk about the miscarriages while having your own at the same time. Yeah. Um, I can't say it was easy. Um, it, you know, that, that was very tricky for me. And I, I think that impacted again, like my connection to my pregnancy when I fell pregnant whilst I was filming However, I, in a weird way, um, I think, I think it was overall, I had this sort of like cathartic experience because I was talking about it so much. And I, it was like a revelation as I just like, like verbal, like blah, 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 blah. It was all coming out and I sort of learned things as we were filming. And then, um, I really noticed, and I, I loved talking to other women about it because, I really started to understand um, this idea of honoring your loss, you know, like, you know, when a loved one dies and you have a funeral and you, you offer flowers and you, it's like a celebration of life. I, I really realized the power of honoring your loss. And, um, and that's when I start, when I was talking to the women, what they did to kind of acknowledge their loss. And, you know, some women got like little pieces of jewelry made, some women light a candle for their, their angel babies some and you know I planted like this little flower box with my daughter and just little things like that that kind of feel like you're 
letting go similar to like the experience of a funeral where you you know you, you're devastated there's that cry there's that grief but you're also letting that go um and certainly while I was doing that within the film that really helped I think in everything that came up for me um because and you know now in hindsight I, I'm at a totally different place now than I was two years ago. Like even when I talk about my losses now, I feel so, so um, I, I, I could barely talk about my losses without tearing up two years ago. Whereas now I feel like I'm at such a place of um, not, I, I don't want to say acceptance, but I, I, it's like I just feel like that was my journey and similar to what we were discussing before and my process to kind of, I, I made this film for them and that was my way of honouring them as well. And it was like my bigger purpose and process and um, that feels like a really nice place to be at as well, you know. Like I, I'm really proud that um, I turned that experience into something that, you know, I, I, I am genuinely really proud of. No, I love that. I love, 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 love. It's, you know, turning that kind of pain into a purpose, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I, God, I just love that, you know, so because I, I, I wanted to ask that because, you know, there's probably some mothers who are out there listening who are like, there is no way that I could push through this moment, right? Um, you know, and, yeah. to, and I, I love what you said to honor them, because again, going back to kind of that disenfranchise, we don't do like a funeral. You don't, you don't do a funeral typically, right. For a miscarriage. So it's like, how, how can I honor them and kind of release that part of it? So I, I love that you said that. Um, so for those mothers who may be out there listening and fathers, you know, who are, it may, like you said, now it's two years, you don't tear up as much, but you know, maybe it's been, two years for them and it's been a while and they're like I just don't know how to shake this like I like I can't believe like I lost that baby you know is there any maybe words of encouragement or tips to help them kind of push forward in that um kind of a long I call it lingering long-term grief heavy grief that happens yeah well the, the thing is with grief there's no like you can't quantify grief in like oh this this is when I'm supposed to stop, you know? So whatever the process is, don't put pro pressure on yourself to kind of, you know, and again, the, the on the other side is if, if you wake up the next morning, you're like, I actually feel okay. That's okay too. Whatever your process is, is fine. Um, certainly uh, what I'm learning now is that how valuable communication is, how valuable honoring your loss is. There are, um, there are many a networks now that weren't around when I was experiencing my loss. Um, I, in Australia here, I work with the Pink Elephant Support Network, but they're online. They have little groups online that you can connect with from all over the world. Um, and I guess another, yeah, another tip would be like, it's okay to sit in that grief and when those good moments come and you feel like you can push forward, like take that as a little win. And if something comes back up again and you want to cry, that's okay too. I just think, you know, again, it, the grief affects everyone differently. Loss affects everyone differently. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I guess from my experience, definitely this idea of honouring and letting that go really helped, was really cathartic for me. No, that's good. I love that. That's really, really good. So this has been absolutely amazing. I can sit here and talk to you all morning for you and all night for me, but you know, I'm not going to hold you all down because I know you got the rest of your day over there. So I always like to end it. The Yeah, no, this is great. So the last question I like to always end it with is for someone who's listening to this episode who uh, may have experienced a miscarriage or may unfortunately experience one in the future. What is the biggest or biggest takeaways um, that you want them to have when listening to this episode? Um, it's not your fault. It was nothing you did. Uh, that was, that's a big thing, which compounds the grief is that, um, you know, a lot of women blame themselves or men blame themselves unfortunately the body is really complex and um you can't control these things happening and if i'm sure if you could control it you would so it's not your fault 
Um, you are allowed to grieve, whether you know it's one week, two weeks, six weeks, 20 weeks, whatever that feels like for you, um, go through it and find find something that is good for you, good for your soul, whether that is, you know, jumping on a, finding a community, um, doing something for yourself, you know, maybe, maybe go throw, you know, like, again, it's sort of this idea about honoring, but maybe go plant a little flower, maybe throw something out into the ocean, maybe go buy yourself a little bracelet and just the initials of if that was your son or daughter, you know, or if you didn't know, write both the little names on the little bracelet. It's just something that you can feel like your experience was something and you're allowed to feel it and you will get through it. I, I, I mean, I have experienced three losses. I spoke to women who experienced over 15 losses. So I just, you, you will get through it. It's tricky, but you will get through it. Oh my goodness. That was amazing. That was amazing. God, you're just such a wonderful mm-hmm. human. You know, I, it's, it's funny. Like, you know, people are always like, Oh my God, you're so strong. And I try not to say that. Cause it's such like a, it's like, yeah, but like, uh, you're saying that I'm strong. Cause I experienced these losses. Like, I don't like, no, like, so that's what I said. You're just an amazing human. <laughs> You're just an amazing it's human. But what it is, it's strength in, like, strength in your experience. And, and I actually think there's something really powerful and strong about kind of letting that, that if you need to cry, then cry. Like, that is, that is strong to me. I think it's actually harder to hold it in because you're scared and fearful. I think it's better to just own it and and say what's on your mind. So, and I think you're awesome. So thank you for letting me share my story. I really appreciate it. Of course, girl. Thank you for being here. And you right, girl, because I am crying all the time. So (laughs) I'm like, people are like, do you? I'm like, I cry all the time. What? Like anytime I'm watching a movie, (laughs) crying, (laughs) listen to a song, crying, I'm just crying. Me too. It's the worst. And I just think, yeah, but I suppose that's that's a good thing, right? Like, yeah, I, I am exactly. the worst. Movies, music. Yeah. Exactly. That's fine. We'll just be crying sisters together. Don't worry about it, girl. <laughs> well, thank oh, you God. again for being here. If they want to contact you, watch your movie, if you can just give them all of your info so they can find you. Sure. Um, our website is www.mumdocumentary.com um, and you can follow us um, on Instagram at mumdocumentary. Hopefully we'll um, be sharing more international releases of the film soon. And Or you can find me um, at Tahina McManus on Instagram. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again so, so much for being here. This was absolutely amazing. I know, like, I know my listeners are hyper, like, yes, finally! So, like, Thank you again so, so much. Woo, you guys. Mm, mm, mm. So good. Shout out to Instagram. Shout out to shout out to God and Instagram for letting Tahina fall in my lap. Because honey, honey. Okay, just wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful human being. So um, if you've had a miscarriage or if you know someone who's had a miscarriage, hopefully you learned some things. Uh, if you ha- know someone who's had a miscarriage of ways to support them, because I think, again, a lot of times we just say things because we don't know what to say or we don't know what to do, as opposed to, you know, really being there for them in the capacity that we uh, we need to be there for them. And so I'm glad that she gave some really, really good advice on how to do that. And then also, you know, if you've been through a miscarriage, like she said, you know, you can grieve like you deserve to grieve. I know I know that society doesn't deem your loss grievable, but that is that's just not true. You know, your baby was your baby the moment that though like you found out you were pregnant. Like the moment that you found out when you peed on the stick or went to the doctor or whatever and you found out you were pregnant, that was your baby. That that loss, that feeling of wanting to plan a family and now it's kind of like ripped away from you you deserve to grieve that that idea of having this child of your own who looks like you who looks like your partner that is your baby like you deserve to grieve that right and so really just give yourself um that time to grieve give yourself that time to grieve allow yourself to process that 
um, you know, don't, don't isolate yourself. It's already isolating, like she said, and, you know, you feel alone. So, you know, try not to isolate yourself. Obviously it's easier said than done, but, you know, try not to isolate yourself in that moment, you know, maybe open up and share or go to therapy or whatever it is that you need to do to not feel alone in that moment. Cause you already probably feel alone, feel uh, some, some guilt, some failure, all the things that you're feeling are also normal. I want to make sure you know that as well. These things as you're feeling are normal because you're grieving, even though it's disenfranchised grief, it's still, you're still grieving. Right. Um, you know, and, and like she said, honor, you know, give some type of honor to your baby, whether it is, you know, lighting a candle, whether it is getting a bracelet, whether it is, you know, throwing something in the ocean, whatever it is that you need to do to kind of honor and, and bring just, good memories to that moment, do that for you because you deserve to grieve no matter when you lost that baby. And don't let anybody tell you differently. Don't let society tell you differently. Don't let your friend group tell you differently. Don't let these doctors tell you differently. You deserve to grieve the loss of your child because your child was your child the moment that you found out you were pregnant, right? And so don't let anyone also tell you that your baby wasn't a baby because of a certain, because of 12 weeks. That's not, that's not fair. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to your baby. It's not fair to anyone involved. Right. And so, you know, as I always say, as you're going through this journey of trying to navigate the feelings that you're having um, when you're grieving, a miscarriage, then you're trying to navigate life after a miscarriage, you know, having that postpartum or having that rainbow baby and not connecting to your pregnancy or not connecting to your child or, you know, having a hard time connecting with your partner and feeling guilt and all of these things, you know, as I always, always, and will always, always say to end my shows, be kind to yourself and give yourself grace because if you don't, who will? (laughs) <laughs> that's it you guys thank you so so much again for listening to another week's episode of this too shall suck podcast a fresh perspective on grief if you are not already follow me on social media at this too shall suck podcast send me a dm let me know how this resonated with you i love 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 talking to you guys anyone who's listening who sent me a dm knows i respond okay i'm probably sending the voice notes like y'all my love so i'm talking to you guys um or if you don't have social media feel free to send me an email at hello at this two shall suck podcast.com let me know if this resonated with you let me know if you have any topics you want to hear some people even tell me some guests and this episode and all my episodes are produced by my amazing producer mike sick and also all the original music you hear in this two shall suck podcast is produced by jimmy samaj You guys, I'm sending you so, so much love and light in your life because you deserve it. I hope you have an amazing week and I'll see you on the next episode. All right, my loves. I hope you all enjoyed that episode. You can actually listen to this Two Shall Suck podcast, a fresh perspective on grief on all listening platforms. And make sure if you're not already following me on social media, on Instagram and on Facebook at this Two Shall Suck podcast. And you can hit my website as well. Learn more about your girl, Lauren Denise at www.thistwoshallsuckpodcast.com. If you love this episode, if it resonated with you, make sure you hit that like button. Let me know, because I know I need to make more videos like that for you. And meet me in the comments. Let's talk about it. I love, love, love talking to y'all. And make sure you definitely hit that little, that little bell, that little subscribe button. Thank you guys as always, and I'll see you on the next episode.